pretzels and lederhosen. It doesn't get more German than that. I mean, it doesn't get more Bavarian German. Wait, that's the same, right? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And as a German living abroad, I'm very familiar with how the rest of the world perceives Germany and the German culture. Aside from Nazis, which is definitely a topic that comes up every now and then, people usually think of things like soccer, cars, Lederhosen, Dirndl, beer and huge stuff. Signs, Oktoberfest, people dancing Schuhplattler, pretzels, sauerkraut, schnitzel, and so on. At least that's been my experience in the US. But I've seen similar pictures from other parts of the world as well. But this really only represents one part of Germany. Bavaria, and that in a very stereotypical way. Now, for me personally, when I encounter these stereotypes of Germany, they don't feel completely off since I actually come from Bavaria. I mean, my life in Munich definitely never looked like this, but I do like to eat pretzels, and I do have dirndl dresses in my closet, and I sometimes drink beer out of a one liter beer stein. For people from the rest of Germany, however, so the majority of all Germans, that's a whole different story. Many of them feel completely left out in this image of Germany. Lederhosen and Dirndl aren't their traditional clothing. They don't usually drink beer from one liter mugs, and the majority of all Germans has also never been to the Munich Oktoberfest, nor do they plan on attending it. And no, Oktoberfest is not a nationwide holiday that every German celebrates. It's really just a local event that takes place in Munich once a year. So how come that the rest of the world seems to somehow equate German culture with Bavarian culture then? To answer that, let's explain some basics first. When we talk about Germany as a country and German culture, we need to keep in mind that historically, it's a relatively young country and consists of many different cultures. Most of what Germany is today used to be a bunch of individual monarchies and it wasn't united to one Reich, empire, until 1871. But even then, the different regions maintained a lot of their own cultural traditions, whether that was in regards to food, clothing, or language. To this day, there are over 20 different dialect groups in Germany with countless individual dialects, to the point that they sometimes even vary from one village to the next. Now, for the longest time, Bavaria used to be its own duchy and then kingdom before it became a constituent state of the German Empire in 1871. After that, it was a state within the Weimar Republic in the early 20th century and after World War II, when in 1949 our current German state, the Federal Republic of Germany, was founded, it again became one of the German states, called Bund. Today we have 16 of those, with Bavaria being the biggest one, but not the most populated one, and Munich, where I'm from, being the capital of Bavaria. This video is brought to you by Raycon and they gave me an amazing discount for you guys. With my link in the info box, you can get 15% off. And in case you don't know Raycon yet, they make super high quality wireless earbuds, gaming headphones and Bluetooth speakers, but they only cost half the price of other premium audio brands. I have the Raycon everyday earbuds. I usually carry them around on my keys and these really accompany me through my everyday life. Like when I'm at the store and it's really packed and I'm stuck in the slowest checkout line ever, it's the best thing to just put my earbuds in. Super easy. Turn on one of my favorite podcasts, turn on noise isolation, very important in that situation, and just forget about the stress around me. I also recently started working out again after a pretty long break, and my Raycons are really helping me to stay focused because I work out at home and it's kind of easy to get distracted by everything around me, but when I put my earbuds in for half an hour and turn on my music, it really helps me to be in the zone and make this a habit. So if you're also wanting to establish a new routine, like going on a daily walk, 
or listening to a news podcast every day, these guys might make that a lot easier. And the best thing is that no matter how much I move, they always stay in my ears because they've been designed to fit into the curvature of the human ear, whether you have big or small ears like myself, and you can even customize the size of the gel tips, which makes it really comfortable to have them in for hours at a time. And when I'm in the middle of doing squats and I want to skip a song, I don't have to walk all the way to my phone, but I can just control everything with the buttons on the side. Pause, play, change the volume, skip a song, go back, answer calls, you name it. They're also water and sweat resistant and have a playtime of eight hours plus 32 hours of battery time. So they're quite literally perfect for everyday life. So if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, click my link in the info box below or go to buyraycon.com slash from Germany and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Now, in regards to the question why so many people around the world seem to think that German culture is the same as Bavarian culture, you may have guessed it, but there isn't just one right answer to this. Instead, there are many theories and factors that are assumed to play a role here. One of the most prevalent ones being that Bavaria was part of the American occupation zone after World War II. As a reminder, after Nazi Germany was defeated by the Allied forces in 1945, they decided to split the German territory into four zones, with each of them being in charge of one of the zones. The Soviet Union got the northeastern part, which would later become the GDR. The UK got the territories in the northwest. France got the southwest. And the US got the territory in the southeast, including all of Bavaria, Hessen, a part of today's Baden-Württemberg, as well as Bremen up in the north and a quarter of Berlin, because as the capital, that was split into four sectors itself. So most American soldiers who were stationed in Germany only experienced the culture in Bavaria and the more southern parts of Germany. And that's what they told people about when they came back to the US. Their time in Germany really did include going to Munich Oktoberfest or seeing people wear Bavarian Trachten and eat Bavarian foods like pretzels. And since American pop culture did and still does have have a huge influence internationally, it's likely that this image of Germany then spread from the US all throughout the world. Another contributing factor that is mentioned a lot in this context is that Bavarian culture is in fact very distinct within Germany. And due to the lack of the one German culture that could represent our country and the rest of the world, Bavarian culture is often used instead. Even during the Third Reich, Hitler and the Nazis liked to promote Bavarian Trachten as a symbol for German culture and tradition in an effort to create a unified German identity. The fact that he himself came from an Austrian town right across the border from Bavaria, where the same Tracht was worn, may have played a role in this as well. There are several photos of Hitler wearing Lederhosen, and the Nazis even established a whole commission dedicated to traditional clothing, called Mittelstelle Deutsche Tracht. So it was referring to German Tracht, but it was really just focusing on the Tracht of the Alpine regions, and turned those into a symbol of German tradition and into a propaganda tool. They passed a law to ban Jews from wearing Tracht, and they even adjusted the design of the Dirndls to fit better into the Nazis' idealistic image of women and their main function of birthing children and being housewives. They decatholicized the dresses, for example, by removing the high collar, shortening sleeves and skirts to show more skin, and tightening the waist to emphasize the female body. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about Bavarian Tracht in particular, its history and its relevance today, definitely make sure to check out my video from last year. I'll link it for you up here and down below. Now, is it the Nazis' fault that Bavarian culture is often used as a synonym for German culture nowadays? In regards to the clothing, maybe partly. But in addition to the factors I've already mentioned, there are a couple trends that took place in the post-World War II era that may have played a role as well. The Munich Oktoberfest, that had been a popular folk festival since the early 1800s, became even more popular in the second half of the 20th century, especially internationally. Tourists from all over the world started traveling to Munich in masses to attend this festival that featured traditional Bavarian food, music, beer, and 
partly clothing. I'm saying partly because for a few decades after World War II, Bavarian Tracht wasn't actually very popular at Oktoberfest and among young people in general, but ever since the mid-1990s, early 2000s, Bavarian Trachten have had a huge revival and they're pretty much all you see at Oktoberfest today. Which also means that there are lots of celebrity photos in Dindl and Lederhosen going around every year and thanks to the internet, you can buy Bavarian Trachten pretty much all over the world now. What also rose in popularity after World War II was the genre of Heimatfilme, which loosely translates to homeland movies or something along those lines. They're usually German-speaking movies that romanticize the simple rural life in the Bavarian, Austrian, and Swiss Alpine regions. But there were even a few Heimatfilm productions that were successful internationally, such as Im Weißen Rösse or The Sound of Music. Even though both of those are actually set in Austria, it reinforced the image of Alpine traditions as German for many people. And then of course there's the Schlager industry that works a lot with Alpine aesthetics as well. For those of you who have have no clue what Schlager is, it's probably best to just Google it, but it's a music genre that's very specific to the German-speaking world and a few other European countries. Now, there are countless subgenres of Schlager music, but a lot of it uses elements of traditional brass music, the Bavarian or Austrian dialect, Trachten, and the mountain aesthetic. <laughs> So this might be yet another reason as to why Bavarian culture is so prevalent in the media. Last but not least, there's one aspect that is probably also a contributing factor here, but could at the same time be interpreted as a reason for why Bavaria really shouldn't represent all of Germany. And that is that Bavaria has always had a unique standing within Germany. It's often referred to as the Texas of Germany, and actually recently met someone from Texas living in Bavaria who said he totally agrees with this. And many people from other parts of Germany like to make jokes about how Bavaria really isn't in Germany. Like, even even in the comments of my videos, you'll often see people write something like, wait, you're from Bavaria, not from Germany. Even though Bavaria is, of course, a part of Germany, but many consider it to be so different from the rest of the country that they feel like that needs to be pointed out. And it does actually have a history of standing out. When Germany first united as an empire in 1871, there was a lot of resistance within the Kingdom of Bavaria to be a part of this union, and they only ended up agreeing to join under the conditions of keeping their own diplomatic body, their own army, as well as an independent mail and train system. Bavaria was also one of the only parts of the new empire that was predominantly Catholic, as opposed to the rest of Germany being mainly Protestant. And even today, Bavaria is one of only three German states that have the title Freistadt, so free state, which doesn't come with any legal differences, but definitely makes it stand out. Bavaria is also the only German state that has its own chapter of the German Christian Conservative Party, while in the rest of the country, the Christian Conservative Party is the CDU, which is the party that Merkel was in. In Bavaria, you can only vote for the CSU. They're like the Bavaria-specific version of the party. On a federal level, they usually show up together though, either as CDU-CSU or as Union. And to this day, there are people and political parties, like the Bayern Partei, that want Bavaria to become independent from the rest of Germany. So in many ways, Bavaria is actually the least typical German place of them all. So next time you think about German culture and things that are typical German, don't forget about the Fischköppe in northern Germany. Don't forget about the Germans that live at the coasts and on German islands, those who speak Plattdeutsch or Frisian at home. Don't forget about the people in Cologne, who not only go crazy for carnival, but also basically have the opposite beer culture from us Bavarians and drink their Kölsch from ridiculously tiny glasses. Well, at least cuckoo clocks and black like, forest cake aren't from Bavaria, but from Baden-Württemberg, so that area is at least a little represented in German stereotypes. But there are so many German regions that just deserve a lot more attention. So to my German viewers, you guys obviously know that traditional German cuisine is a lot more than Bavarian schweine 
Bratten, Knödel and Weißwurst. Now it would take a little too long for me to list all of the amazing traditional dishes from other regions and I'd probably forget some and not really do it justice. So I was thinking, why don't we just turn the comment section of this video into a list of the best German dishes that people eat in your region. Just leave a comment sharing where you're from or where you live currently and what your favorite traditional dish from your region is. I'm super excited to read all of your responses and of course if you have anything else to add to what I said in this video, feel free to share that in the comments as well. And to those of you who'd like to explore Germany yourself, I'm actually currently planning a group trip to Germany that you guys can join me on. So if that's something that you might be interested in, it will be super helpful if you could fill out the survey that I've linked in the info box so that I can get a better idea of what your guys' budget is, which time of the year would be best, etc. The survey is anonymous and it's not a commitment to actually going on the trip. I'm still in the early stages of planning, but I'll definitely keep you guys updated. I hope you guys found this video interesting and it could bring at least a little more attention to other German regions and cultural traditions outside of Bavaria. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for free if you like what I do on my channel and activate the bell if you want to get notified about new video uploads for me. And of course, make sure to follow me on TikTok, Instagram and Facebook for more content and interesting discussions. And you can also join my Patreon community with this link or support me by sending me a super thanks underneath the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!